Next to it are the chip makers and the AI trade. Let's check in on that with Jenny Horn joining us, host of Next Gen Investing, for a look at C3 AI, which is basically the eponymous leader of this AI rally. How's the market thinking about their earnings, Jenny? It seems like the path to profitability is going to be a bumpy one for this stock, Oliver, and I think that's why we're seeing so much selling today. I saw shares down as much as 13% here off yep. the open. They've recovered, I mean, about a percent here down. No, no, now no, down, down almost 14 percent Yeah, so continuing to sort of teeter around about a 12 to 14% loss here. In reaction to earnings that did beat expectations, they did report a fiscal first quarter net loss of around 64 million or 56 cents per share. That was an improvement from the net loss they reported at around 67 cents per share just a year ago. Adjusted losses coming in around 9 cents versus the 17 cent loss that had been expected. And we also did see their top line exceed expectations at around 72.4 million compared to 65 million just a year ago and also ahead of expectations. Now they did say going forward they do expect their, their basically revenue to be pretty much in line with what the street had been expecting if you take the mean average. But they do not expect to be profitable profitable in their fourth quarters. They do not expect profitability for the next several quarters. I think that's, a, again, a going concern and why we're seeing this kind of selling. Anytime a company cannot lay out a clear path to profitability, seems like they do get punished. Although, mind you, this stock had rallied 181% into today's open, so they had outperformed the S&P 500's gain of around 16%, I mean, by tenfold, basically. So not necessarily super surprising to see some selling, but we also have seen this name fall out of favor as of late. It's down over 35% off its 52-week high. It slipped below its 50-day simple moving average. So despite the fact that they did unveil this whole new suite of domain-specific generative AI offerings back yesterday, not enough to please the street here. But again, this name had seen such outperformance and really hasn't had the numbers in its quarterly reports to back it up. Okay. The fact that the market's selling this company off despite basically no huge negative surprises here on the report, right? I mean, investors knew they were going to lose money. They lost a little bit less. It's just the outlook doesn't show anything, you know, surprisingly positive. But that's important because, you know, people are going to attribute the China story to Apple dropping, but there's a lot of other tech trades unwinding here. And, of course, this being the AI story, the most important thematic one, it's not that they bombed these earnings. Right, and exactly. I mean, they did beat on top and bottom line, and their, their revenue guidance going forward wasn't a disappointment exactly, but I think that we're starting to see now with these companies that have rode the success of AI, how are you actually going to back that up? And I think it's going to be costly. It's going to take a lot of infrastructure implementation that this company still needs to undertake, and I think now we're seeing somewhat of the AI bubble start to burst. I'm not saying that they were necessarily in a bubble, but if you look at their chart and you see the run-up they had, it really into the They're summer. Insane. Now we're starting to see things normalize because this company, it's going to be costly to unveil and to really serve the AI expectations that have been set forth. Yeah, and as George was telling us yesterday, I mean, the, the top line growth is still less than what you're getting in some of the highest basic cloud growth stocks. So, and, you know, they're not doing the huge 30, 40, 50% growth. Uh, I mean, they're growing, which is good, but it seems like they're going to have to spend quite a bit to continue to grow even faster to justify the valuation. So it's a little bit of a head scratcher uh, why it moved the way it did so hard and then gives it back. That's like the market suddenly getting cold feet. What were people expecting? You knew that this was like, you know, an unprofitable business with uh, a lot of, uh, you know, road ahead of it. That's kind of the idea. Should we talk about GameStop? I mean, I feel like, you know, we're talking kind of serious stuff here. Is GameStop serious? It's down 5%. It is down 5%, and it was initially up 3% off the open and just completely erased that within a matter of, like, 60 seconds. Ish. Now, this company has had some serious leadership shakeup over the last several months. They had their CEO getting fired. They then had their CFO back in June resigning. They had activist investor Ryan Cohen taking over as executive chairman, although he's always had somewhat of his hand in this company. But they did have second quarter results that beat expectations, lifted by international sales, as well as this very vague software release. They did say in their quarterly update that during the quarter, these results were primarily attributed to the significant software release, along with increased new hardware sales or things like consoles internationally. However, their sales of collectibles like clothes, toys, and cards did fall. I find this so fascinating, though, because they do not hold an earnings 
earnings call. They didn't last quarter either. So this vague software update to me doesn't really say much. That's perhaps why we couldn't see their gains hold. But they did report revenue that crept higher at around $1.16 billion. Compare that to around $1.14 billion just a year ago. Adjusted net losses at around $0.03, cents, which was well ahead of their estimated losses at around $0.14, cents, but they're still losing money on an adjusted basis. Now, in a separate filing, they did report their gains in terms of sales internationally led by Europe. Well, then the U.S. sales fell by around 4.2%. However, I think it's so important to look at the short interest in some of these names. Typically, we look at the meme stocks and we think they have relatively high short interest. GameStop has around 19% of their shares sold short. AMC is around 30%. And surprisingly, C3AI is over 33%. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah. The mean Shorts stocks. getting paid. Exactly. I mean, typically you see over 20% short interest. So to then see C3 AI, 33%. Carvana is another massive one that comes to wow. mind. It's over 60%. But GameStop, at least in terms of the meme stock frenzy, they are on the relatively lower spectrum. But still, I mean, you know, 20% of their shares sold short. Yeah. And uh, good connection into uh, also the other story with AI, too, that that's such a heavily shorted stock. Seems like the market... It just decided it is giving up for the time being mm -hmm. on trying to sell this story of some of these uh, potential growth stocks and or, you know, meme comeback stories. Market's just not having it. Different situation when the two years printing 5%, maybe a little risk coming off here. Thanks, Jenny, mm -hmm. uh, for the look at a couple stocks under pressure. So shorts getting paid out in some of these companies that have been a battleground of narratives and stories, those stories breaking to the bearish side this morning, whether it's AI, GameStop, or Apple, though still maybe just a consequence of a broader move down for the NASDAQ and Apple.